Yellow is a delusional here. I wanted to make a video on how to stop getting knowledge checked by characters that you barely see online. So one of the things that I see often is when I was playing Panda, is that a lot of players didn't seem to understand how to punish properly whenever she attempted to go for a move that was actually quite negative, but they decidedly did nothing or they retaliated with either a 10 frame punish when they could have launched my character at the time, Panda, when I was ranking up for the Road to Fujin challenge that I was doing with her. So I'm gonna teach you guys some of the things that you can properly punish against Panda. And this also includes Kuma if you do come across Kuma as well. So one move that you will probably see a lot often being used by the bears is 111. Now, 111, when used, is actually not a true string. So, whenever she goes, or he or she goes, I'm just gonna refer to them as just the bears. So, when the bears go for 111, they uh, don't get a guaranteed string from it. So, the first hit is, of course, if it hits, it hits, but the second and third hit are not free. So, I'm going to show you what happens once the second and third hits were to be used, right? Alright, so now I'm gonna make Panda attack me. I made the Panda also hold back to block just in case, so that way you can see that I properly punished the move and that she couldn't go for a block to block punish my move. I guess that's the right way to say it, I guess. Basically punishing the move that might come after that so she can actually block it. If she were to decide to go for only the second hit instead, same thing, you can punish it. Meaning that the second hit and third hit, if blocked, can be properly punished with a down forward two from Yoshimitsu, which is his 15 frame launch punish move. Now, you may have seen me whenever I do come across one of the bears and they do throw out their 111 string against me, that I would attempt to sidewalk to my right to essentially evade the move and then properly punish it with my back 2-1 into my combo so if one of the bears decide to go for 1-1-1 you can do that essentially uh, I'm not saying they should go for that combo I'm just saying that you can punish it by sidewalking to the right whenever they do attempt to go for the 1-1-1 one, one, one string another particular string that is guaranteed if they do manage to get the first set off of you is the bears down forward to one string now this string is minus 16 and i see that oftentimes whenever i do this string online players don't know how to properly punish it they'll just punish it with a one one or whatever 12 13 to even 14 frame move but never a launching move so if you were to get hit by this move of course you get launched and a lot of the times what I did with Panda was that I would purposely whiff the first hit only for the second hit to then catch me off guard or catch the opponent off guard I mean. So when she does this move, punish her properly with a down forward 2 or any launching mid move that you have that's at least 15 frames. The caveat is, is that if the bears decide to go for only down forward 2 alone, the move is minus 9. So they're safe. So let's say again, I'll try to block it one more time. You see, the bear managed to block it. So if they attempt to go for a down forward two, but they don't follow it up with the one, then your best option is to try to go for a mix up option. Like, okay, go for down back three threes, or go for just simply a down back four, or even just to check on them if they do attempt to do nothing because of course they go for down forward two and they're safe most of the time they'll try to press buttons against you like either a down forward two which actually ducks from highs just go for a down forward one or even attempt to go for a this is risky though going for a up three plus four depending if they do go for the down back two which is a low move that you can use against you it's not saying that you should be using that just saying that that's one of the ways you can go about beating it now, 
the move that I just mentioned, which was down back two, down back two is plus one, oh, sorry, it was plus one on my end, but it's negative one on the end of the panda. So if they use this move, they are still safe, they can still block, but if they were to go into their hunting stance, it's minus three. She can try to attempt to beat you by going into her hunting and then into her one from down back to but you can still beat her if she decides to do this This is one of the reasons why she, the bear seems to be kind of low tier because even the options they have are not really optimal half of the time so they have to play very safe so if she goes or they go into this let's show it now there you see you can actually beat it their fastest move they can use from hunting uh, stance, they can't do anything. Even if they're the ones who engaged with the down back two and hit you, you can still beat it with a down forward one if you have a 13 frame or even something faster than a 13 frame mid punish. Now, of course, if you do manage to block the low instead, you can then launch her immediately. Reason why is that the move is minus 17 on block. So if she attempts to go into hunting stance, she's even more minus, I believe. Let's see. No, I, I think she goes into hunting stance from here. So I, I would assume that if she goes into it, let's say, without going to hunting stance. Yeah, she's only minus 15. But still, you can launch punish the, the bears with your wolf standing 2-1, which I messed up there, which is 15 frames on startup. So don't allow the bears to go into their hunting stance or even attempt to go for their down back two. If they hit you with down back two, usually a lot of the b better bear players, they'll just go for down back two, but they won't go into hunting stance. Instead, they'll do this. They have a safer option to go into hunting stance by using back to one. They're plus seven when they do this. So if you do try to retaliate at this point, they can then catch you off guard with their ones or either they even uh, can attempt to launch you with this down forward two from hunting stance. As you see, I couldn't do anything at that point. So if they do end up hitting you with their back to one to go into hunting stance, you can't do anything. You just have to basically block whatever mix up they may go for. Now, if you're smart with Yoshimitsu, if you can time it right, let's say she does it again. You can do your parry with Yoshimitsu. I think you can also go for your flash. Yeah, you can, though you might trade. Though if you were in your no sword stance, let's attempt that one actually. Nah, you won't be able to beat it. Uh, you can only uh, do it with your sword stance flash, which is essentially when you have your sword out. No sword stance is when you're like this. So a lot of the times, just don't manage to press buttons against the bears if they do end up hitting you with this move. Because if you do, you're going to get launched. If they, let's say if you decide to go for a jab, your, your fastest 10 frame move if you're not playing Yoshimitsu, for example you'll still end up eating the down forward two from the bears. It's one of the, it's one of my favorite setups that I like to use with the bears is that I either try to go into hunting two or hunting one into the charge up move because a lot of the times people don't even beat that move, which I'll go into next. Now the bears, they have several charging moves they can use. They have their down back one into two. They charge it completely. They also have their wolf standing 1-2 if they charge it up. And from what I remember, they also have hunting into 1-2 as well. And they have, I think the final one is that they can go for a low, which is their down back 2 plus 3. This move here. They can charge it, dealing massive amounts of damage. So one of the things that I see often when I played with Panda was that players didn't really retaliate enough against her charging moves. Now I did come across a couple of players that did interrupt me when I was using the charge up moves with the bear. So again, let's say if I were to do this. If I get hit, I can retaliate still. I don't have to wait for it or whatnot, I can just retaliate. Now I'm not too sure if this can be sidestepped. Yes, it can. Even on hit, you can sidestep it. To my left, was it? 
It was to my left. It's attempted to the right side. And to the right. So both sides can be stepped if they attempt to charge up the move. So if you're somebody that now understands a bit of the bear's stupidity of their moves and you continue to get caught by them, now you know that if they go for charge up moves, like in this case the down back one into the charge up two, they can be stepped even if you get hit by the initial first hit. Now that depends if you were to actually get caught by a counter hit that is. And for some reason, you can still retaliate. You can still manage to step the move, even on counter hit. But not to the right side. Yeah, I attempted a couple of times and I couldn't really sidewalk it or step it to the right side. So it is stronger to the right, but that's on counter hit. Now, what if they attempt to go for their wall standing 1 2 charge up move? You can still step it to your left and to your right but on counter hit you can't do shit but i would assume that if you were to get hit by the move on a counter hit you may still interrupt her let's see nope can't interrupt her if she ends up counter hitting you with the move you gotta respect it but of course on normal hit you can then beat it with a 1-1, your fastest 10 frame move against her. Instead of just using a 10 frame move with Yoshi Mitsu, you can attempt this. You can go for Flash. Now what about her hunting into her 1-2 charge up move? Yep, yeah, same thing, step it to the left. And to your right. And of course you can interrupt her if she were to try to charge up the move. Let's see on counter hit. Nope, you can't get away. Move to the left or to my right. And from what I can assume, same scenario, you can't really interrupt her if you press with a 10 frame move or if you were to attempt to go for flash, I would assume. Now, when it comes into the bear's down back two plus three move that they can charge up as well, that move is special in the sense that it cannot be stepped at all. No matter if you time it right. Or if you're preemptively already dodging a move. So your best bet is to try to interrupt her when she goes for this move. Of course you won't, most likely you're not going to go end up using a launching move against them. You might just, just throw one of these against the bears. And funny enough, if she one of the bears decide to go for this move, it has a bit of like high crush. So not exactly, there are times that some highs can go in. It just depends on the wind up fee of them going downwards and then somewhat winding up the attack. Sometimes they'll bobble around to, to standing high to where they can get hit by a high move and to where only a mid move can only really hit them. But the biggest trait about this move, and this is the only good thing about the bears I would, I would assume, is that when they do go for this move, okay, you block it, you they do massive, massive amounts of chip damage. But not only that, you can't low parry it. You can't low parry the move. So your best bet is to either interrupt her with any of your moves before they let out the attack. Of course, if they wanted to, they can just go for that down back two plus three without charging it and catch you off guard with that. Same thing with the other moves too. They can just decide not to hold it. And funny enough, this has three charge levels. So the charge levels is, of course, your regular one. Then you have your medium one. And it actually has different frame data on hit and on block. But it's not a massive change. So for example, if they were to block it, I believe the move is minus 14 on block if it's this move, I believe. I could be wrong. And then on the second charge, it turns it into a minus 13. So it's not really a big deal. So when you fully charge it, you're actually plus three on block. So I think this is all the charge up moves besides the down back two plus three move. So essentially, this is what makes the bears kind of difficult to fight against when they can decide to either go for a regular move that's not charged or they decide to go for the fully charged version and be plus three because a lot of times people just block it. They won't even attempt to interrupt it. Or if they're smart, they'll go for a semi-charge and catch you off guard with that instead. 
So your best option is to see whether or not they may charge it. If they do charge it, just be quick about it and go for a 10 frame. Don't even attempt to launch them. But if, since you know now that you can actually step it, and if you block it, you actually are at a bigger advantage. So you can actually step it if they do attempt to either do a two lo a level two charge or a level three charge. In fact, let's test it out to see whether or not if it can be stepped if it was a level two charge on um, block, let's say. Yeah, you can just step it if you want to step it. Another move that I often use later at the higher ranks is when I started incorporating more moves into the kit was the bears. I think it's up back one plus two this move. Now this move is so ambiguous because you don't know what exactly the bears are going to do because of the way they're jumping. Sometimes it looks like they're doing this. A wall running uh, one plus two. Sometimes it looks like if they're going to hunting stance and doing this as well, though not exactly, but it kind of looks like it. And sometimes it looks like you're doing this. The 4 forward 1 plus 2. So if they do attempt to go for the move that I just mentioned, up back 1 plus 2, they can catch you off guard. Now this move on block, let's just record it. It's launch punishable. But the one thing that the bears can do when doing this move, and that is if they do attempt to go for the move, they can actually cancel it. They can cancel it by going into hunting stance, by either holding down on the D-pad or whatever controls that you're using, or by simply pressing 3 plus 4. So I've done this a couple of times where I go into up back 1 plus 2, and then I just go for a launch. So it's one of the, the things that the bears can actually do and try to trick you by mixing you up with doing that particular move. Now, if they do attempt to just, you know, try to mix you up, you can still try to retaliate them if you're quick, which, depending on the moment, depend. I, I don't know why in this case, it just doesn't really launch. So you're better off just using this move instead with Yoshimitsu. But if let's say you're not that quick, right? You are assuming that they may go for a low, right? You're making a more of a, like a soft read where you're trying to stay safe if they do go for the move and not cancel it, but then still trying to wait for the moment to react. So if you do, let's say you will get probably hit by the initial hit if you retaliate too slow. But if you can, then you can manage to beat it with a wolf setting four. Don't go for any launching moves because the chances are they may just go for a hunting one to trick you. One of the moves that I also use a lot when I try to go for frame traps with the panda was that I use one plus two. In certain scenarios where if the opponent did block my charging attacks, I would then attempt to go for a one plus two against them. Now one plus two, now one plus two if blocked, it's minus 13. Or you can go with your down forward 1 4. Now, 1 plus 2 can be beaten if you do sidestep to your left. As you can see right there. To your right, she can actually catch you off guard. So, one of the things that a lot of players do get hit often with the bears, and it's when they're knocked down. When they're knocked down, depending on where they're facing, if they're facing you, towards their head is facing you, but their body is either lying down, in the case of their torso, is either facing up or they're lying on their backs they have a very quirky move they can use that they can try to hit you with it's similar to what dragonov can do where if he's knocked down he can actually crawl away or even attempt to command grab you while he's knocked down depending on how he's facing so if, let's say for example if the bear was facing i believe on their backs they can do this now this move is a mid. So whenever you see the bears go on their backs, if you knock them down, they're probably going to attempt to go for the one plus two. It's the same thing with the one on their stomachs. It's a one plus two hit, but it's a different uh, hit property. So if they do this move, blocking it with a mid, meaning block it while standing, and they're minus two when this happens. So you can try to kind of retaliate with either a down forward one if they do attempt to go for a jab, or you can attempt to go for something else. In this case, you can go for a crouching move to beat them if they do attempt to go for something else. But since they're in hunting stance, the likelihood of them going for anything that's not fast enough, like in the case of their hunting one, which is 12 frames, you can try to beat them with a down forward one, or you can just attempt to go and sidestep them to get away from their attack. That is your only other option. 
this one is a low. Now, as long as you see that they're lying on their stomach and they do the move, anticipate whether or not they're going to be going for that double palm uh, or paw strike that they will go with. So you have to immediately duck it or crouch block. Now, if this were to happen, they are only minus 12 if you manage to block the hit. So you can't really go for a launch. But if they do attempt to go for any other move right afterwards, like for example, a hunting one, two, or whatever, you can actually attempt to launch them right afterwards. But if they do end up trying to hold back, they can actually block it while they're in hunting stance. So one other move that you guys tend to get hit off often and don't properly punish is the Bears 442. Now this is a shared move that Heiachi used to have. Uh, I say used to because he's no longer around. Sad. But essentially the Bears have Heiachi's 442 move. And this move is amazing in the fact that, let's say if we're recorded. You saw right there? I went for a jab, and they managed to high crush my jab, which is a high. So 442 can actually crush highs when attempting to use 442. It's one of my favorite moves to use when I was playing with Panda. Because a lot of the times when I fought against somebody that was a little, you know, trigger happy with their highs, I would just go for 442 to beat them. Now you do have another move you can use, which was back 3 plus 4, but this move is inconsistent at times, where when you do try to use the move, you can actually high crush with this move. But it's again very inconsistent a lot of times, so I prefer to use 442 instead. But when you manage to block the move is the problem here that I'm trying to get at. That, okay, for one, be sure not to be spammy with your highs. But when you block the move, you're minus 19. Or should I say the bear is minus 19. And because of the pushback, not many players can actually beat this move. They don't know how to properly beat it with their characters. So there are exceptions to how you can properly beat the bears if they do spam their 442 against you, since it's minus 19 on block. But with Yoshimitsu, if you do come across the bears and they spam 442 against you, this is how you beat it. You go for CD1. Now you go for CD1 quickly. Do it quickly, because if you do it too slow, they'll be able to then block the move. And don't go for the uh, beginner-friendly down forward 1 plus 4 version of CD1, because that move is 20 frames. So if you were to use that move, they're going to block it. They're going to block the move. So that's how you beat that particular move if that move comes out against you. Now the last move that I'll be mentioning is hunting stance into back 1 plus 2 into 1 plus 2. Now, the reason why this move is basically a knowledge check is that a lot of the times when you do go into your hunting stance with the bear, and a lot of the players, they just don't know how to really beat the hunting stance because it has already a built-in evasion against highs. So, a lot of the times the bears will either go for their two, or if they want to be smart, a lot of the times they even go for back one plus two into one plus two. Now, the reason why it's smart in the sense is that all the times players, when they do believe that the 2 is coming out and they block it, they don't know that the 1 plus 2 move can be stopped right from right there, but they can also go for the follow-up and get caught with the second low. Now, the thing is, is that this move is super launch punishable, as you can see. You can even attempt to do this instead if you wanted to. You can go for your uh, your down forward one plus two, sorry, one plus four, from the you know the beginner friendly version of CD one. That's twenty frames on startup. To punish this move, actually wait, there is one last move that I've used often that people got caught very often when I fought them. One last move before I truly end this video. The last move is down forward one two into one plus two. Now the reason why this move is so good, and I use it often online, that at the, at the point that I got most of my wins because of down forward 1, 2 into 1 plus 2. Now if it's used, it's minus 14. So you can punish it with, I believe you're left crouching, with a wall stunning 4, or you can go for a wall stunning 1, 
into a 1 or a 1-2 depending on if you're playing with Yoshimitsu or some other character that has a 14 frame wall stunning move they can use. Now the reason why people don't really know what to do against this move is that I tend to do, do this when I was playing Panda. I'll delay it. So if the pandas delay this move, just don't be afraid to actually retaliate and interrupt the bears or block it either way because it's still minus 14 anyways against, you know, the bears. But if you ever get good enough to retaliate against this move in a different way, you can retaliate like that if you are that goaded at reacting on the move specifically. Or, you can go for your flash. And you can kind of get something back onto the bears if you were in those sense as well. You can kind of catch them, but you then still get hit by the initial move right after. And depending on the stage that you're in, the last hit actually can floor break on the last hit. Not on last hit if you, let's say, get counter hit on the first hit of the string. Because the first hit on the string on counter hit guarantees all three hits. So that's essentially everything that I know of with the bears. This is the same thing with Kuma. There's no actual change. The only difference between the two bears is that Kuma has electrics essentially in heat state. And in the case of the panda, what she has instead is that she has bicycle kicks. And if she does this move, she can move forward like this, which I just failed to showcase. As you see right there, the roll move actually works as a, an attack if they're in heat state. And if they have enough heat left, they can go for the one. Which if they were in block, if they were in blocking the move, of course they'll get hit by that. But if they were blocking instead, they actually get guard broken. So you can get yourself at least a 2-1 against them half of the time, or either a 1-2, but you don't get the follow-up as a guaranteed. And I guess the last thing, even though I said that that was the last thing, one other thing <laughs> is the 1-2, this move right here. The last hit actually has a lot of chip damage. If you block the first initial hit, you can actually duck it. So it's not like it jails you in and then you have to worry about the hit. But most people won't actually crouch down because they're too afraid of what exactly the bears can do. Because they don't know, again, what they can do against you. So I hope that this video has actually helped you guys out. I it, It's not as edited out comparatively to my other videos. But I think I prefer it this way since I can then speak to you guys and give you guys in detail what you could try to do instead. Instead of just immediately spamming moves and the HUD with the, you know, the, the frame rate and all that shit. And then essentially it's just like you have to, it's bombarding you with information too quickly. At least with this you can take your time learning exactly what I'm trying to get at with each move. So if you enjoyed what you watched, give it a like, dislike if you want to dislike it, subscribe if you want to see more of my shit, and stay tuned for more.